Hey guys, we're going to go back to this uh, favorite series, uh, what your favorite Edison deck says about you, part two. So some of you guys have been staying tuned, so I'm going to have a video. This is going to be a video for you. Uh, so uh, just a disclaimer, uh, I know from the last time I made this video, some of the, you guys actually got offended by it. Um, I don't mean to offend anybody with this video. It's just meant to be funny. It's not supposed to be accurate at all. It's supposed to be super exaggerated for comedic effects. So just a disclaimer, it's not supposed to be true, so don't get... Just don't get it twisted. All right. Uh, for the first one, uh, if your favorite deck is Gladiator Beast, that's going to be my first one. Uh, if your favorite deck is Gladiator Beast, your favorite content is violence. Um, you find the idea of like having two or more individuals uh, just fight each other to the death. Um, that's why you like Gladiator Beast because uh, you're seeing, you're witnessing two animals fight each other to the death basically and this is no different than if you were to watch MMA fights uh, from UFC's uh, seeing blood and gore or boxing even is something that you just like watching uh, if you go on Instagram there's a lot of violent content on there where people just uh, fall and then they hurt themselves or they just whack another person uh, or they even might even roast each other to uh, to death so uh, those are your type of favorite type of content it it takes up all your attention and you just can't get enough of it uh, everything else is just boring to you because this is not enough thing your favorite genre is probably action movies uh, where there's um, a, a clear a clear bad guy and he's wreaking havoc on the planet or the or the world or some situation and then there's like a clear uh, hero protagonist who's trying to like you know beat his ass uh, beat their ass uh, <laughs> <laughs> to beat their ass and then try to win uh, and save the world, I guess. So that's kind of your favorite content. Uh, another one is you probably participated in sports betting. Um, any type of sports betting where there's like animals involved, where you can just watch uh, horses race each other, and pretty much uh, if if a horse goes down in a race. You really enjoy the fact that, uh, especially if they're your competitor, better. Uh, if they're if you're betting against a horse, you know, and then you're betting for a specific horse, and you see the competitive horse, the competitor's horse go down, uh, it's only to be subsequently shot in the in the face. Uh, that's something you really enjoy because now you have a chance at winning your uh, your bet. Uh, you also like watching other things such as football, which uh, is a very much a high contact sport, or watching uh, you know chickens fight. Each other illegally in uh, certain aspects of the world where that's legal uh, you'll definitely love a good competition between fierce competitors so that's what you uh, you probably do if your favorite deck is glider beast uh, you also hate any shows or movies where there's just too much talking uh, my dad is like one of those <laughs> sorry sorry to shout out my own dad but yeah my, my dad is like this uh, anytime I try to have a conversation with him he just, or he just, anytime I bring up a movie where there's just a really good plot, but the plot, you know, just takes, you know, some good build up, he just always says to me that the show or the movie is just too boring, is there's just too much talking in his accent, his really thick uh, Asian accent. Uh, so that's what he does. He just says, this, the only thing that's interesting to uh, about a character is whether or not that they can beat up the strongest guy in the room. Um, and anybody else who just can't beat the strongest guy, it's just uninteresting to them, and they just would rather watch the, the, the strongest guys fight each other. Uh, everyone else who just talks too much is, to them is just like a weak person and uh, does not deserve their attention. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what their personality is like. Um, you also ha absolutely hate tea sets in Yu-Gi-Oh! So like anything where you're just setting uh, cards into the uh, you know spell and trap zone, and then you're also setting a monster face down defense position, you just get so bored by that move. You don't think there's not enough action, it's not enough setup. Uh, that's why you play Gladiator Beast. You just summon a monster face up attack position, and you just swing into a face down monster or face up monster, and then damage step. You just activate shrink or whatever it is that modulates the attack of that monster to beat over it, and then you like tagging out and it's blowing up stuff. Yeah, so it's all in for Yu-Gi-Oh. It's all about uh, the attack points for you, and it's all about blowing stuff up. As you can see with Geysaurus, Geysaurus with Test Tiger into Prisma, oh, Prisma and the Test Tiger to Geysaurus. It's all. It's the name of the game for you, and that's why you love Gladiator Beast. And uh, your favorite phrase is probably who. Um, who is like it's grown to be a, like a very disrespectful way of like acknowledging or not acknowledging someone's identity uh, because they're either a too boring or b they're just not known into the uh, the sphere of 
whatever it is that they are known for. So like in the event of uh, in uh, let's, let's take Edison for example, right? If you take all the people who are famous uh, Yu-Gi-Oh players, right? And someone says to you, "Hey, um, Rodney is showing up today to play." Your likely response would be something like, "Who?" And then the friend has to go, "The Diva Hero Player." And then that's how you remember names. You you remember people's uh, like you remember people's by the decks that they play in real life, rather than the their actual name and who they are as a person. So you might say, so, oh, that guy, I ain't worried. Um, so that's just basically how it is. Like, uh, you just only pay attention to people who are significant in any field. And anybody who's even rising or even buddy, or anybody who even beats you in a, in a game of Yu-Gi-Oh, you'll still not remember the name unless you hear about it in, the, in like the news or something. So, yeah, that's your favorite phrase. You just like saying the word who, and you like to use it very disrespectfully. Uh, and also, if you ever get rich, uh, the you'll spend most of your money on famous weapons. So, if uh, for by chance you hear that, uh, you know, like how the gladiator beasts have like uh, good-looking armor and good-looking weapon, you're more you're most likely gonna mimic that. You're gonna have medieval weapons from the past, even ancient torture devices too. I can see that happening. If you ever have money, uh, you'll most likely spend it on them. Or you might even see like uh, a weapon used in uh, maybe Zelda or Halo or any sort of like uh, expensive or any sort of franchise that uh, really has like the weaponry uh, you definitely have your eyes on ever you definitely have your eyes on setting to own them uh, one day if you ever become rich so yeah that's enough for uh, gladiator beasts uh, on to the next one uh, this is this was going to be one of my favorites um, so uh, Machina gadgets if your favorite deck is Machina gadgets uh, namely the ones that play uh, Machina gear frames in their deck and gadgets uh, together uh, here's your personality type uh, you're you work for the government and I'm not talking about the private contractors who uh, work as a third party for the government you work directly for the government so that means like DMV uh, firefighters policemen uh, anything that just gets paid directly from the government uh, that's uh, that's your personality type uh, behavior so you work you sleep and wake up at exactly at the same time every night uh, if you know that you have work uh, early in the morning you're gonna sleep around like 9 p.m. and then you're gonna wake up around like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. depending on uh, whether or not uh, you can make breakfast on time uh, you you work a nine-to-five job with job security uh, with 401k and a pension plan so you're gonna work uh, long term and you're gonna look for job security over high pay uh, you also don't care about being liked so long as you things work out in the end and the truth was told. So uh, I actually know a lot of people who are like this where uh, they don't really care to be liked by their peers. Uh, they just simply live life uh, day to day, uh, making sure that everything works out well and that uh, at least nobody, at least you value the fact that you don't tell lies and you only tell the truth, no matter if it is a, uh, a, a no matter if it's a harsh truth, uh, you'll still be brutally honest about it. And you believe that's the way that it should be. Uh, you also believe that government is essential to the proper pro proper functioning of society. You understand that people are very self-interested individuals and that if uh, in their self-interest, uh, they'll, they'll likely do things that are either A, illegal or B, immoral. And in either sphere, the only way to counterbalance the immoral or illegal activities uh, that people partake in, uh, in in the pursuit of their selfishness is to counterbalance it using authoritarian force. So that's why you play Malcolm Gadgets. You just think that everything just makes sense uh, from that sense of... Uh, everything just makes logical sense. Um, you also know how to fire your own taxes without a tax attorney. So you're one of those people who uh, don't use H&R Block or who don't even use a, a freaking uh, tax software uh, that's free by, you know, uh, free <laughs> TurboTax.com or whatever. You just know everything about taxes because um, you're a very studious person and you just like uh, making the most out of your income without paying a third party to do so. 
So, uh, and also you constantly judge others without realizing it, especially at the workplace. If uh, somebody uh, you see that's slacking off at their work, uh, you find them that they're very inefficient with the time that they have been allotted to uh, to finish the work for the day. You constantly judge that particular person over yourself because you see yourself as someone who is very hardworking and very uh, morally uh, righteous. That when you see someone like that, you are either A, disgusted by them, or B, you just feel the need to judge them. Uh, and you know that you can't do anything about it unless you're, uh, you're their supervisor. And if you're their supervisor, you're definitely going to have a word with them, whether or not they like it or not. So, yep, uh, that is a one way, uh, a way that you behave. Uh, and then also on top of that, you also don't like changes. Uh, anytime there's any sort of changes uh, regarding the workplace environment, uh, you just don't like it. Uh, you find the idea that change is often a bad thing or any sort of mentioning of change is a bad thing because uh, you believe that if everything has worked before in the past, then why should you try to fix it? You, your, your motto is basically, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if it works for you, it must work for everybody. And uh, and it'll only work if everybody just acts like you. Uh, but unfortunately, the world doesn't uh, act the same way as everybody else. And so you just don't like that fact about people. So uh, you just rather think, you're, you'd rather just stick with what's tried and true. And uh, that's why you don't like changes at all. Uh, your closet is probably full of uniforms. Um, your whole life is about working uh, nonstop. You realize that working gives you a sense of purpose in life and that uh, no, none other uh, endeavors in your life doesn't really satisfy you in any way because oftentimes if you're, um, to you, if you're spending time uh, hanging out with your friends, uh, you find that you're not making any money out of it or you're not doing the world any favors by hanging out with your friends. You often have a really bad work-life balance where uh, your entire closet is just full of you know clothing for for work where uh, you know that by working uh, you'll be you'll be able to generate revenue or you'll be you'll be able to generate money uh, a steady paycheck and then that'll allow you to afford the great things in life such as having a house such as having a family uh, having a reliable income is just something that is uh, top of your priority list and that is why your closet is full of uniforms uh, and you will really hate it when you do uh, when you do actually hang out with somebody you really hate it when people relate to anything even if it's for five minutes uh, punctuality is something you value very highly and if anybody doesn't adhere to the punctuality uh, you automatically cast them out to be someone who is uh, malicious rather than simply ignorant and even if they are ignorant they're probably not worth your time anyway so uh, you definitely hate when people waste your time and that is uh, the type of personality you are uh, also math is your favorite subject um, math is to you is very logical there's everything is an open book uh, you can pretty much follow the the logical steps on why the equation uh, equates to the uh, to the outcome and you can actually verify this uh, at every single step and whereas if you deal with uh, human beings where they there have a tendency to lie a lot or they have a tendency to hide uh, information because uh, it is self they have self-interest in doing so uh, you find that whole um, the whole process to be uh, more of a headache and a chore and uh, whereas math, everything is an open book. You know uh, what steps, uh, what steps there were, what steps were made to make errors in your calculation, and everything makes logical sense. There's no, there's everything is accounted for, and to that, uh, things like that is just beautiful for you. Whereas uh, behavior where you cannot uh, factor in because of incorrect or imperfect knowledge, you just don't have any interest in it, such as uh, soft sciences. Uh, soft science to you is just fake science to you, and hard science, such as uh, where things are um, provable in a vacuum, is something that you just adhere to uh, at all times. And this is why you play Machina gadgets, right? Uh, you summon a Machina gear frame, you know exactly what Machina gear frame is going to do. It's going to search you a Machina fortress, or it's going to search you a Machina, uh, a Machina force. And if you summon a green gadget, you know that's going to search for red gadgets. Like everything makes logical sense, and you know exactly what you're doing when you normal summon those guys. So there's not no mystery, and it makes perfect sense. Um, and then uh, another <laughs> another uh, aspect of this is that you really didn't like this joke at all. 
Um, you feel very, uh, you feel that this j this joke was very distasteful. It didn't have a structure to it where there was no uh, delivery in the punchline. You found the idea that um, that this wasn't even a joke at all. This was just more of like a personality analysis, and that it was soft science to you, which is why you probably didn't like it. So you didn't you didn't find this joke very funny, and it wasn't obvious. So yep, um, it's funny because I use Ron Swanson. Uh, as my as the picture in this video and he's like pretty much the opposite sometimes uh, but he's very much in line with the whole like uh, disgust behavior uh, so yeah that's pretty much all for mocking gadgets I hope you guys enjoyed that one and I'm gonna have one more after this so uh, for you for those of you guys who like zombies and I'm not talking about diva zombies uh, if zombies is your favorite deck and I mean uh, zombies in the Edison sense where uh, you're playing things like uh, vampire Lord you're, th you're playing like uh, what is it paladin of white dragon in the zombie form I'm talking about those player who likes to play that uh, their favorite card is zombie world where you can revive stuff from your opponent's graveyard I'm talking about those zombie players. I'm not talking about the competitive zombie player that plays Deep Sea Divas uh, to Synchro Summon efficiently with Goblin Zombie. I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about the guys who are true zombie players. So, uh, if you are, if your favorite deck is zombies, you're a goth kid. Um, you love the f uh, dressing up in all, in all black. Uh, you like having tattoos of angels and demons uh, and even vampires. Uh, you probably have a vampire bite in your neck. That's a tattoo, obviously. Um, you just love vampires. Vampires to you is like um, it's it's like very cool to you because uh, for one, they're very powerful. They can fly, and they're also undead. Um, they've lived for centuries without dying, and the thought of immortality is kind of cool to you. Um, you also wear um, you also dress in a way that uh, appears like them in in the in a physical sense. You probably have white you uh, you probably like wearing uh, white makeup to where uh, you look close to being a vampire, um, an eyeshadow, or something like that. So that's kind of your style. You're a goth kid. You listen. You listen to all the music associated with being a goth kid. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and you find going to the cemetery or the gra oh, sorry the graveyard's fun. Um, you like the idea of paroling around in a area where you might come across ghosts or demons or ghouls or any sort of undead uh, spirits. Even though I don't believe it exists, but to you it does exist because uh, they've occupied many uh, they've occupied many sort of fantasies in um, in lore in uh, stories of, of the past um, and you honestly believe that they're real that there are uh, incantations that you can say uh, to revive them from the dead and you just think that if you go across the cemetery then you'll have the opportunity to do so and to, to come across one would definitely make your night uh, yeah, uh, and you've probably practiced <laughs> dark magic. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is funny because if you see a lot of their artwork, it's very much um, in line with dark magic, right? Uh, and that's something that people don't talk about because you know there's a lot of symbolism in all these cards. The old spellbinding circle has a hexagon as the symbol, and uh, or a pentagon, I think. I'm not even sure. And these are like you know this is like devil territory where you see like the the symbol and you're like wow this is really cool uh the book of secret art is another one where uh, this is something that spellcasters oh they're not called spellcasters in uh in japanese but in the ocg uh they're called uh they're called what are they called wizards no they're called something else I think they're called sorcerers. So yeah, like Dark Magician is your idol. You find the idea that he his mysterious behavior is very in line with who you are as a person. Uh, you know that if you are free to tell the people about your personality, they might freak out or they might feel that they're uncomfortable around you. So you just keep everything a secret, like Dark Magician does. Uh, so yeah, um, his. Uh, so you also like to watch horror movies. Horror movies like uh, Jason is pretty basic to you, uh, but there's probably more like. Um, you probably love movies like uh, Pan's Labyrinth or something that depicts uh, like 
hell uh, in a very vivid sense, like Spawn. Uh, you you find the idea of Spawn being really cool, uh, but you also like movies like uh, anything made by Tim Burton, like Corpse's Bride or Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas. You love the way that they're animated, especially Jack Skeleton, but also Oogie Boogie. You definitely like that those type of movies with those with those type of animations, but you also like very gory ones uh, that are basically depictions of it so pan's labyrinth and even the latest movie that i heard of which is called uh inherit inheritance yeah the movie was called uh heredity sorry so heredity was like one of your uh favorite film in 2018 uh because of the way that they depict um the afterlife and the uh yeah pretty much the afterlife so uh pretty much yeah uh you just love horror movies and uh let's move on uh you also like wednesday adams or yami yugi depending on if you're a girl or guy you just love their outfit being able to wear a choker necklace with tight black uh, tight black jeans is probably your favorite style. Um, and then you know, for if you're a girl, you like Wednesday Adam and her demeanor being very serious, but also being very, um, I don't know how to say it. She has like a deadpan humor. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like your uh, go-to uh, demeanor. Uh, you know, you also know every single serial killer in all of history. Uh, serial killers to you are fascinating. You're very interested in why they did it and how they came to be. Uh, those stuff kind of intrigues you because uh, they're not normal behavior. So you often confine in fringe behaviors that... Um, you often find fringe behaviors to be more interesting than normal behavior because uh, you find... Uh, normal behavior to be uh, boring to you, whereas fringe behavior such as being a serial killer or just being weird all around is something you just take delight in. Um, so yeah, that's why you take notice about these individuals in history because you want to know why they were like that, maybe because they were born that way, who knows. Um, you're probably interested in uh, psychology as well, so or psychiatry, so you want to know why, uh, what, what is it that uh, made them to came to the decision that they made to make something so uh, not normal but also immoral. Okay, uh, so that's all the the personality type videos that I have. Uh, yeah, so sorry that, that was pretty grim and very specific. But yeah, I just uh, I like personality types and I like hearing what people are like. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll definitely make another one if you guys are interested. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.